I'd like to talk really kind of briefly here about galvanic cells. Now, galvanic, galvanic cells are today what we would kind of call a battery, uh, but was specifically just one little aspect of that battery. Um, they could be called voltaic cells, or they could be called galvanic cells, and it's named after Luigi Galvani. Now, the Galvani, what we really remember him for, is the fact that he was actually a physician and a biologist, but um, at one point he was doing something, dissecting frog's legs, and he had uh, uh, the frog legs on a metal tray, and he was using some metal probes, and there were two different kinds of metals, and when he touched them, the uh, frog leg jumped. And that was a pretty uh, amazing thing to have happen there. So we went from there and learned about uh, electrochemical cells. Well, we go back here to our uh, standard reduction potential chart, and we're going to say, let's make ourselves a uh, electrochemical cell, a galvanic cell, out of silver and, let's see, out of copper, because those two numbers are pretty convenient for us right here. Now, when you look at these, we say, oh, okay, the uh, reactions are such that this one, okay, the silver, has a greater reduction potential, so that is going to actually do reduction in the direction as written. And our other one that we've chose is going to have to happen in reverse. In addition, the fact that uh, the first one is going to be reduction, that's going to be our cathode. And the uh, copper then will be our anode. So that's the information we need from this chart. Moving on. So if we wanted to make ourselves a cell, what we would do is to take two beakers, and one beaker here we would put in a silver solution. And if we're doing a standard silver solution, a standard uh, cell, then this would be a one molar solution. Um, over on the other side here, we'd use like a one molar copper solution. And we would choose our, our negative ions carefully so that they would not interfere with the reaction. So we could use like silver nitrate, we could use copper sulfate, those would be kind of standard things to do. Well, the silver is going to be, like we said, that's going to be our cathode because that is where reduction is going to take place. And for our copper cell, that's going to be our anode. And it is not going to be the reaction as written. We're going to have to shift that around. And we'll adjust our uh, voltage here in a minute also. So let's go ahead and put together the cell. So the first thing we knew is we would have a piece of metal in the copper. And then we would have a piece of metal in our silver side. And those would be our electrodes. Okay, the copper side, this again, we said this is our anode, because this is where oxidation takes place. Now, the oxidation reaction is actually going to be the reverse of what we have up here on top. So, copper metal is going to turn into copper ions and a couple of electrons. On the silver side, we're going to have silver ions, the reaction just as written above and that's going to pick up an electron and become silver metal. Now, the question would be then, when we make this, what sort of voltage are we going to have between these two pieces of metal? And we would find that by putting a little voltmeter up here and connecting it. And the idea is, is we would use this voltage here and we would not exactly use this voltage because we have turned this reaction around and so now, the voltage here is going to be our oxidation potential, and the oxidation potential will be negative 0.34 volts. So the voltage we'd expect to see is the, the reduction potential plus the oxidation potential. So we want the number 0 0.80 volts plus negative 0.34 volts. So we would expect that to be 0 0.46 volts. If we do hook this up as is, it turns out we're not going to see any kind of a voltage because this is not a complete circuit. So we're going to add in one more piece to this. 
And what we're going to add in is called a salt bridge. Now, very often, what a salt bridge is a U-shaped piece of glass or plastic tubing. And inside here, we're going to put some kind of solution, ionic solution. And it's called a salt bridge because it's usually some kind of a nice salt like uh, potassium nitrate would be an excellent salt. So I'm saying inside here would be positive and negative ions. And we choose ions that would be just very nice uh, spectator ions that are not going to interfere with the reaction. And we would plug the ends with, say, a little bit of cotton. Now, it turns out a lot of different things could act as a salt bridge. Uh, we could even put uh, both electrodes into one beaker and put some, like a piece of porous material between the two. But standard-looking cell has a U-shaped uh, tube filled with ions. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, the overall reaction here is, you can see we have silver ions with one electron. We have copper ions with two electrons. So we're going to have to double our silver uh, in order to make an overall reaction. So you could just see that we're going to have two silver plus, uh, turns in plus a, co a copper metal, turns into two silver metals and one copper ion. Let's go ahead into the next page and write that down. So our overall reaction would be 2 Ag plus plus a copper metal would turn into copper ions and 2 silver metal. Now notice when we did that we did have to uh, cancel out two electrons so n is equal to 2 in case we needed that for a calculation or something. We don't need it right now. Let's go back. Now, over here at the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't go back. We didn't finish. So this is a cathode. And this is reduction. Now, with this complete circuit, we would expect to see uh, 0.46 volts. Here's our anode and this is oxidation. Now at the anode, the copper metal itself is going to turn into copper ions. So what we would notice is that over time some of this uh, electrode would go away and we would end up with a slightly smaller electrode because the copper would react and turn into copper ions. And so we'd maybe expect our solution to get a little bit darker. In the same way, over on the other side, where our silver is, because the silver ions in solution are actually going to turn into silver metal, then we'd expect this electrode to actually get a little bit larger over time. Now, because at the uh, cathode side, these positive ions are turning neutral, that's going to make that solution a little bit on the negative side, because the negative ions are still in there. We're not writing them down, but they're still there. And then the same thing over on the anode side, then we have copper ions forming. So we're going to get an excess of positive ions on the anode side, and we're going to have not enough, or maybe we could say we have an excess of negative ions, on the uh, cathode side. So this is where the salt bridge comes in that it allows the negative ions to transfer in this direction and the positive ions would be allowed to transfer in this direction. And what would happen that would keep both uh, solutions electrically neutral. So that's why a salt bridge has to be allow ions to flow you couldn't just piece, put a piece of metal there because that would allow electrons to flow but not ions. So the salt bridge uh, keeps the two solutions electrically neutral. With our overall reaction we can see what happens is that the silver ions are getting reduced and the copper ions are getting oxidized. Now this is a standard cell and we said for our standard cell we would expect the voltage here the voltage of the cell 
was 0 0.80 volts plus negative 0.34 volts. That was our uh, E of the reduction plus the E0 of our oxidation. Now that is uh, if we are talking about one molar solutions and if there was a gas involved it would be one atmosphere that's what makes it standard. But what if it wasn't quite standard? So let's say we uh, increased our concentration of silver so we had more than a one molar solution or well, we could see just by Le Chatelier's principle that that's going to drive the reaction forward and if that happens we would get a greater voltage than our point Four, six volts. So anything that drives the reaction forward would increase the voltage. In the same way, if we could remove some copper ions, that would also drive the reaction forward and that would increase our voltage. And in the opposite way, if we were to decrease our silver ions or uh, increase our copper ion concentrations, that would drive the reaction in reverse and that would lower the voltage. Changing the solids, Okay, we know that solids do not affect an equilibrium, so that would have no effect on the voltage. So here we have our basic cell. So we have the cathode, and that is when we go back and look at our voltages, when we start back here with our, our um, the numbers we get from our reduction potential chart, whichever one is larger is the one that turns into cathode. Okay, whichever one was smaller gets reversed and that's going to be turning into our anode. Now the last thing here is where are the electrons and the electrons we know are uh, going from the anode because the copper is losing electrons so those electrons are going to travel this way and they're going to end up over here at the cathode because the cathode is where electrons are gained so the electrons travel from the anode to the cathode and that is always true just like anode is always where oxidation takes place okay cathode takes place at the reduction um, I mean reduction takes place at the cathode and electrons always travel from the anode to the cathode so that's just one kind of quick look at an electrochemical cell uh, very messy